I'm going to show how to create uh, an RDS database and uh, link it to a Jupyter notebook and uh, query the data from the RD, RDS database. So first of all, uh, we need to create a uh, RDS database. So we can go to uh, AWS and then uh, go, you can type here RDS, then you will get the results for RDS. You can click on that and then you will navigate to RDS uh, uh, interface where you can create your own database. So you can uh, click on the create database. Uh, so I'm going to create Postgres uh, SQL uh, database. Uh, so I'm going to create pre tier because uh, we need to keep our cost down and this is only a demonstration as well. So important thing here. Uh, uh, these are uh, by default, so you don't have to change any of those. Uh, type a, a master password, which you can remember. So I'm going to type a normal uh, password. So you need to confirm the same password. After that, uh, instant configuration, you don't need to change anything. You have like, uh, the, you are selecting pre tier, so already the uh, smallest instance is selected. So storage is keep as it is and you can uh, disable this uh, uh, storage uh, auto scaling because uh, this is only a test environment. We are not going to have a big amount of data. So and then you don't need to do any of anything here. You can have your default uh, uh, VPC and you have to make sure one thing you need to cl click here public access since we are using uh, for a demonstration, we need to enable the public access. Normally in the working environment, in commercial environment, you will not enable the public access. Uh, you can keep, uh, 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 you can create, uh, choose your existing uh, VP, uh, VP security group or you can use a new security group. Uh, what I'm going to uh, suggest always to create a new security group uh, or select one that you have already have uh, for don't use the default one because you are going to give additional permission uh, here so and you can type a name that you want to put it uh, let's say i'm going to put uh, post uh, grace uh, post grace uh, test one and i'm not going to pre uh, give any preference for availability so and then uh, if i look at additional configuration this is the port that uh, uh, database going to access so it you can use the default uh, database for because uh, uh, it is a default one you don't need to change that uh, make sure that uh, you selected password authentication uh, you, there are other way of authentication method like password and IAM database authentications uh, which is uh, uh, additional uh, meta method method of uh, connecting to a database uh, I think this is an advanced method so I'm not going to use that I'm just going to use the password authenticated here and then uh, for foreman inside you don't need here you just uh, uh, because it's just a demonstration like I said uh, and you don't need to enable addition enhanced monitoring here and in this additional configuration this is really important guys uh, you need to uh, give a name for your database in my situation what I'm going to give the name that I been using in my database so I'm going to give the name same name that I've been using today. So you can type that database name and make sure uh, you type always the database name because this is important and remember this one because we are going to use this name to connect into your uh, database. So uh, you don't need uh, any automated backup because this is a demonstration and you don't need uh, encryption as well. Uh, you can keep if you want but uh, uh, for a demonstration purposes is not necessary and then uh, you keep uh, maintain window everything is as uh, default selections and then you uh, create uh, hit on the create database button so when you click on that it will take a couple of minutes actually to uh, create a new database so what i'm going to do here is to save time i'm going to use a database that i have already created uh, uh, about 10 minutes ago so this is that database you can see it's available so what you can take you can go inside 
so one important thing is after your database is created uh, you might need to change your uh, security group uh, details so if you an important uh, open in another tab uh, you can see there's a you will see a screen like this and you need to uh, edit your inbound uh, uh, rules so basically uh, go here you need to uh, by default for you uh, there will be you are uh, already created this one if you create a new uh, uh, database uh, security gate sorry uh, security group there will be a default ip address you are unique you uh, you are unique ip address here and then this is already created so if you create a new security group when you are creating a, a database uh, you don't have to do any changes here because it's already but if you using existing database you need to go and make add rule and select uh, this uh, here you can see post then you will get your port range and go to custom and uh, you can select my ip address or like put, uh, put like uh, uh, ip anywhere so that it will select all range so zero 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 so that's mean anyone can access uh, your uh, database but uh, in the commercial environment most probably this will be like uh, lock into a custom uh, security group so i'm not going to uh, create a additional security group uh, additional inbound rule because i have a, by default i changed my security group already to a ip anywhere so i'm going to simply delete that and save change rule so make sure if you are using an existing security group go to uh, security group and edit inbound rule here edit inbound rule and then select that uh, postgres sql uh, uh sql and then uh, add your ip address but if you are using the uh when you if you create a new security group by default it will create a uh, access to the um your ip address not to the all the ip address only for your ip address by default it will create a security group so um that uh, uh, that part is done so the important thing now uh, is remaining stuff so you need to click this uh take this endpoint so basically you need to copy this and uh, i'm going to share this uh, jupyter notebook don't worry guys so you have access to everything so you need to put your uh, endpoint here and then this is your database name that uh, i was mentioned so make sure you remember that and create uh, and put uh, that database name and this is your database username uh, by default i am using the default username if you change your database username you need to like put that this is my password so now uh, we are going to check our whether our connection is work so if you simply type uh, enter shift enter you can see uh, my database connection is working now so uh, now uh, i'm going to the next section uh, where how to query this database so what i'm going to simply do is create a uh, a small uh, database uh, here uh, it's, uh, something called uh, menu uh, this is a, a, just a simple uh, sql query i'm going to run here so you can see this i'm just running so so now i have created a database uh, in my uh, in uh, i have created a new table in the database uh, you can see it here so i'm going to insert some data to the database so that i can show you guys that uh, i have insert that uh, data so now i'm going to in the next step i'm going to query my database that i'm created data data table i created here it's called menu so can you can see i'm going to select everything from menu and uh, query that so can you see that i can see the first output i'm getting here uh, so it's a, if you wanted to get the first uh, one output first one you can use the fetch one uh, if you wanted to like uh, query more so fetch all you can run this one so it will fetch everything uh, this is the name that we insert menu item and then uh, let's say if you wanted to like select some rows so let's say in uh, my situation it's about two rows only so you can run this one so you need to make sure always that you close your uh, database connection after you do a uh, any queries so but otherwise you're going to get an error message so that's what i'm using here because close and coming so that there's nothing will remaining here 
so the next idea is the next stage of this uh, i know a lot of people want to uh, get this data into a directly to a data frame because uh, when you're working on a um, machine learning project or anything similar to like that you need to get the data directly from the database into a, uh, a data frame so that i'm going to show how you can do that so this is the query for that so you can just directly execute and you will get the same column so basically you need to only give the column name so and uh, run this function fetch all and the column name pd for data frame you will directly get everything to your data plane so i'm gonna close the connection again so now i'm gonna um, show you how to as a next step i'm gonna show how you can insert data uh data frame into the table so basically you have a data frame you need to insert that into a uh, aws rds uh, proscript uh, sql uh, database so this is how you can do let i'm going to show sm small demonstration here so this is i'm just creating a data uh, frame uh, small one uh, you can see this is uh, my my people uh, small data frame so let me show you that uh, how it's going to look like uh, so what I'm going to do now I'm going to create a table in the uh, my database. This is the query and then I'm going to execute it. Then this is how uh, we are going to insert the uh, our this uh, small table data frame into the uh, table. So this is the uh, function for that. Uh, so you just run that and then you can see single insert is completed. So in order to show you guys that everything is completed, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this uh, 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 select all from people. The people is the database that we created here, a uh, table that we created here. Uh, so I'm going to run it here and show you that result. So you can see that everything is here. So uh, basically the same. So this is actually the way that we use it, single inserts. Basically it's go one by one but when you're working with a large data set uh, this is not the way to do it uh, you need to use the batch insert so in order to show you guys that i'm going to uh, take a large data set uh, not large around thousand rows so that uh, i can demonstrate it here so this is my uh, uh, i just took apple share price uh, uh, from yahoo uh, website so i'm going to import that so this is something uh, similar so can you see that this is our new data frame it has uh, more than 1200 rows uh, and five columns so what i'm going to do as a next stage again create a new table in our database so apple table so i'm going to run the queries so uh, after that completed that this is the up, uh, query uh, function to update all the many data at once so this is we are uh, this is how creating the list list in from the data plus value and this is the function so you have to make sure this is if it's a string value here you need to put uh, let's say uh, in case of in my situation everything is uh, integer or a floating value so if you have a like let's say one column in uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, in a string format you need to make sure it's one of those is you make into a uh, like this you put something like this uh, so uh, you insert uh, within a bra uh, within a quotation mark uh, uh, otherwise uh, you will get an error because it's not uh, considered as a string so you know what to do that part so if let's say if this is i'm going to put like that so this is then this particular column one two three uh, three column of the data is considered as a string so uh, here for me, it's not uh, everything is a numerical value. So I'm not going to put any string value here. So I don't have to change this function. If you have a string uh, value in your data frame, make sure that you uh, put this in the right place. Make it that column as a string. Okay, guys. So uh, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this function and then click on update mini. So this will take a bit of a time because it's need to update uh, 1200 data uh, rows and since our database very small minor like a lower function database it's going to be take bit of time 
so let's wait a couple of seconds uh, it should be done quickly hopefully within a uh, 30 minutes so uh, while this is running I'm going to show you how to create uh, how to join uh, uh, yeah it's completed guys so it's uh, I'm getting the messages data so what I'm going to go and show you guys now I'm going to query that table that we created using the uh, large data frame so show that uh, the resource is there so can you see that everything is there so what I'm going to show you that let's say we the data that we updated we wanted to take into a data frame like as I said earlier there's a way to uh, take data to, into a data frame so I'm going to run this uh, small query uh, you can see uh, we get everything into convert to a data frame again so just to show you guys again this is a new uh, data frame actual one so I'm just going to show you uh, you can see the old one and the with new one that's exact match so that's mean we exact all the data from the uh, uh, all the data from the database so oh, this is how you can uh, connect to your RDS data base to a Jupyter notebook this is for the Proskus SQL uh, I'm gonna do a couple of small video for SQL and other database as well in future uh, uh, now I'm gonna show you guys uh, if you want to connect uh, to a, your RDS database directly to a uh, PG admin how you can do that so this is uh, this is a PG admin interface so you just have simple in, uh, open your PG admin and then uh, go create and click server so here you just type a name uh, you wanted to uh, uh, give it uh, make sure that uh, so that uh, you can directly identify the name uh, something that you can remember I'm gonna put YouTube test and then uh, in here the connection part this is uh, what uh, important here we need to go to the database again take this our endpoint and put it here and then make sure that uh, you type your password here and make click save it will take a couple of seconds actually it, uh, uh, directly get connected so you can see that your database is connected if you go here and uh, if you uh, still is uh, so it will take a bit of time this is our database uh, name that we given uh, if you go to the schema and then if you select table you will able to see all the table that we created up to now so if you wanted to see data let's say go here and then uh, uh, you can uh, first hundred row you will see all the data that's the insert so this is how this, the, this is the method of like this is how you can uh, join to a PD admin uh, 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 interface for connected to PG admin interface uh, using RDS database uh, thank you guys uh, thank uh, I'm gonna up, uh, update our update everything to a, a link and have in a descriptions level so that you can download this uh, Jupyter notebook uh, make sure you guys sub, uh, subscribe to my channel I'm gonna release small video going forward which uh, you can uh, will be very helpful to learn how to use the cloud for your day-to-day -day work thank you guys